What's up everybody? Bloodborne here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the recent AMA that was done by Ashes of Creation's creative director, Stephen Sharif, along with four of the community members who are also content creators. These are pretty cool events that Stephen does uh, periodically throughout the year. It gives members of the community an opportunity to talk to Stephen and ask some questions uh, in a little bit more of a direct format, which is actually pretty awesome. One of the first things that is talked about is uh, certain tools that guild leaders in Ashes of Creation uh, can look forward to. And some of these are actually really different from what we're accustomed to seeing in other MMOs. First off, this boils around to offline communication. So having the ability to message guild members, even if they're offline, uh, they're looking at the potential of integration with SMS text messaging uh, for those who are to opt in. Now, this is a very important part about being able to opt in. This is not something that they're just going to force upon you and say, hey, if you're part of this guild, uh, if the uh, guild leader decides to SMS everybody, then, you know, that could be abused and things like that. So this is an opt-in system that they're looking to integrate, which could actually be pretty awesome as far as if you're throwing together a run or something like that, you could message people out and say, hey, hop on, we're doing this. Uh, the next one was actually forums and message boards within the game. Now this one I'm kind of mixed on because uh, there's with the usage of Discord and already the, the main game forums, I don't know if there's necessarily a, a need for yet an additional layer of communication. Um, you kind of get to the point where, well, did I see something on Discord or did I see it on the main forums? Did I see it on the in-game forums? Now, this is all going to be contained to the actual guild uh, window, so there is some uniformity there, uh, but I, again, I'm a little skeptical of this one just because of the fact that there's going to be already multiple layers of communication and a lot of people are going to have discords, so maybe some people just won't even use this feature, but it will be there for you to use. A couple of the other things are really performance data. so giving guild leaders the ability to kind of take a look at the data around player performance within the, the guild and seeing like who's participating in events and wars and other activities. Um, and also knowing, you know, play times of, of people. So like, you know, basically myself, I typically play from, you know, 9 p.m. Eastern time till about 2 a.m. So it helps. These, these tools are kind of designed to help a guild run more effectively and be able to tailor the events and runs and things like that towards the guild itself and ultimately i think these will all be good i don't know how much they'll be used but again it's nice to have them if it is something that your guild will use now there was a decent amount of time spent on uh the pve side of things and pvp so the story arc system and how that is actually going to cater to different players uh different levels and really creating different playing experiences. So kind of what does that look like? One of the big things mentioned when, within all of this is the dynamic AI system for bosses. Now, if you played other MMOs, you might be familiar with things like WoW, for example, where you have an open world boss and then the more people that queue in, you know, the boss gets more health and maybe does more damage and, and things like that. That's pretty basic in terms of, of adapting to what's around them. This actually has a lot of different things that it can do. So um, with larger groups, for example, the boss might actually use more AOE attacks rather than single target attacks because there's more things to hit. Uh, this might require you to be a little bit more organized in where you're positioning yourself and not just ball up and try to take down the boss, just DPS it like crazy. So uh, something like that. Now, one of the other things that can happen is uh, more of a behavioral adaptation. So the example they're talking about is if you're using a lot of crowd control abilities, the boss might actually change to become more resistant. Now we've seen this in something like Lord of the Rings Online where bosses get adaptation. So the idea behind this is that uh, enemies can only be affected by a crowd control a certain number of times. The other part of behavioral adaptation is kind of like if you are using a lot of ranged classes, uh, or ranged attacks, 
the the boss might change and start doing the uh distance skills and force you to go into melee or it really tries to balance out the overall encounter which is kind of neat this is one of those systems you're really going to have to see it before we get a good understanding on how or how and what the counterplay is to each of these points either way i think the dynamic ai system is probably a good modernization of the way that we're typically accustomed to fighting mobs and bosses uh, in games uh, we're used to very scripted encounters so having things kind of change and really just make you rethink how you play sometimes that can be a little bit more fun and create a different level of engagement which i think is overall a good thing one of the next big things that they talked about was crafting now we know crafting is going to be a huge part of ashes of creation uh, it's going to be a very critical part because we know that there's going to be some of the high-end components that come from from kind of end game type of situations and you're going to need those elements to craft the best gear we also know now that crafting stations uh it may seem kind of like a no-brainer but crafting stations are going to be available in all nodes however economic nodes are going to have some additional benefits to crafting and one of the most important things to to note about economic nodes and their involvement with crafting is the reduced fees so crafting fees in economic nodes are going to be really really low uh and to the point where they're almost not there at all so if you're going to be crafting a lot this is going to make you think that maybe that is the type of node that you want to be in so it's going to save you some money and probably maximize your profits in crafting and it really seems like they're trying to make uh the economic nodes really the central hub as far as crafting and trading in vera so you're going to have uh more uh housing availability more market buildings and possibly even more traffic and trading opportunities from crafters uh, and then also the crafters in these nodes can benefit from the additional shop certificates that allow them to set up a shop virtually anywhere in the world not just uh, in the nodes market itself so it gives you that big flexibility when it comes to maximizing your reach as far as what you're trying to craft and the cost and like i said so these these nodes are going to be a hub for crafting and this is where it's all probably going to go down next up we're going to talk about the rogue so this may be a disappointment to some players who are looking to uh, get an early test on the rogue class and archetype however the rogue is going to be delayed as far as when it is going to make its way into alpha 2. it will not be available right at release and they talk about some of the reasons for the delay and that they want to really focus on the existing archetypes so the development team is trying to really uh get all of the active and passive abilities for the other archetypes that are already available really dialed in and ready to go um and really balance those out to make sure that we can get a good test in those in the initial phase of alpha 2. Uh, the other idea behind this is that the way they're looking at it is quality over quantity and i think this is always a good thing i would always take quality over quantity and just about anything that we do um, so they really just want to make sure that the the archetypes that they already have are in a good spot so they can get the most amount of data uh, for the players who are using it during the alpha 2 testing so obviously this will create a couple uh issues during testing we're not going to get some uh, very specific group dynamics and there's going to be some limited play styles uh and things like that so we'll just have to see how that goes uh the the idea is that they will be available later on during alpha 2 just not right at the initial launch um but once the rogue is introduced they're going to do the same type of thing it's going to un undergo a lot of testing uh they're going to put it through all those gameplay scenarios and all that so look for that later on in alpha 2. 
So these topics are the ones that I really kind of took away something from the AMA with. Um, there are other topics in there that um, you may have more interest in as well. There is some lore-based stuff in regards to the essence and how that interacts with the, the players and the NPCs and whatnot. Uh, and there's some other stuff in there. So uh, I, I strongly encourage you to, to go check out the, the whole thing if it's something you're interested in. Uh, they do have it over on the Ashes of Creation YouTube channel and it's all chapter marked as well. Uh, like I said, this is just the the core components of the AMA that I really kind of latched on to and had thoughts on. So um, make sure you go check out the whole video and check out the other creators that are also on there. Uh, I want to thank you guys all for watching and make sure you're subscribing to the channel for more Ashes of Creation content here in the future. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care.